Great day, great day. It is the end almost of the great day for me today. But I just had to get back on because I just jumped off a Zoom with Dr. Marisha Sherman, who is a nurse and, uh, and also a minister. And I've known her for many years, and she is a frontline responder and also a hero for sure. But she was so uh, instrumental in getting some information out that sometimes we just don't pay attention to. And I know that not everybody is on Zoom, and that's not something they want to do. But you know, as wise, wise Greek community advocacy, I have to bring the information that she gave because it is so important. Uh, as she was talking about, the great thing about it is she is, has a doctorate in Christian counseling. And so she is, my goodness, she is really in the forefront as a nurse, a frontline nurse going into patient's room, working 12 hours uh, and taking care of these people. And, and one of the things that she said was one of her most important things is having to be able to tell people that, yes, they have a negative uh, uh, I guess, negative part for their uh, COVID test. But she talked about the fact that the heartbreaking part of having to have to talk to them also about the positive results of those tests and just sharing with how families are torn apart. Even if they come in and there's two to three members of the same family, they separate them. And the only way that they're able to communicate is by FaceTime or just by uh, somebody passing messages. And she said because of it, the way it's set up, that once you have that uh, patient, that you're responsible for that patient. No one else goes in that room. You know, I, I was a nurse for 50 years, and I know we always had what we call teams. But even though there's, there's team in the, in the building, but when you're talking about taking care of a patient, then sometimes you are the only person. And this is one of the things that she stressed. Sometimes she, that she is the only person that the patient sees for the whole 12 hours. You don't have anybody serving trays or uh, coming in to clean the room or whatever they do, they need to do. It's her doing, giving the medications and giving them full treatment. And so sometimes that, that means that she is responsible for that patient in life and in death. And one of the things, the reason that I am so excited to come on and talk to you about it is because we did discuss the fact that people don't uh, tell people uh, what they want to happen to them, if something happens to them. And, you know, we could go out in the street and, and get in a car wreck. And I always preach this. You know, that's one of my things. I have been a trainer for end of life uh, for, I guess, probably 12 years now and even more so uh, as when I was doing research. And so it's so important that we take, when you leave and hear this uh, video, that you will go in and talk to your family member. Yes, we all say, oh yes, uh, I'm going to heaven, but so many times we don't prepare for our life here. And I, and I can tell you, I've had uh, I've watched three family members die on, on and, that, and they were on ventilators. So this is so important to me, and I wanted to share this because that was what she was saying: is that it's so hard. You when these things happen, she said you could be talking to the patient, and in, and in a few minutes uh, they can they can die that quickly. So when you ha when that happens then you can take some of the stress off of the rest of your family, including you, if you will just talk to your family members before they get in that shape. It's even better if you write it, if you get an advanced directive or you, uh, they write something down about what they want to happen. And so here we are, we're hearing these stories that they're making uh, all of this fantastic way of, of presenting media, talking about all of these family members, all of these patients uh, that are being found. I think even just today they talked about having 60 uh, people that had died 
in trucks outside of the funeral home. These are not refrigerated trucks, so you know what, what you're, you're getting. And the neighbors reported that they were seeing fluid run out of the truck. So I am saying all of this, and I'm being very dramatic, as I can be, because this is something that is so important to me. Take the time today and just say, you in the house with your family, uh, if you want to make a TikTok or however you want to do it, but ask your family member, if something happened to you, what would you want me to do? I think we des we should give that honor to our family members, and we should give that also that uh, honor to your family members about you. So don't go trying to talk to your family about uh, what you what they want unless you've also shared with them what you want. But I, the, it was so good. Dr. Marisha Sherman was uh, the person who was at one of the was our speaker, and she is a nurse working every day uh, at, as a travel. I don't know if she's doing traveling nursing. She's done it before, but working as a nurse, twelve hours on the front line. I told her. I said. Uh, I just put in the chat box, honey, we are putting you on the prayer list today, on our 6 a.m. prayer list. Uh, so we usually call out our nurses that we know. Uh, we know them by names if they're here working in the area, area hospital. But she is on our list right now. And also, I want to thank uh, Miss Kashana Holland, who was the host and who brought her on. I happened to catch it that she was going to be on the Zoom uh, on um, on our Facebook because we're Facebook friends and I am so glad. So if I'm going to name this YouTube and I hope that you will share it when you see it uh, when I'm going to name this video and it's Vital Word An Essential Conversation with a Frontline Responder and Hero A Vital Word from Dr. Marisha Sherman An Essential conversation with a frontline responder and hero. And so I am saying, getting off, as I say uh, so many times, we owe it to each other to know what each other's desires and wishes, not after they die, but at the end of their life, which can come today, tomorrow for any of us. We just need to really be... Uh, I guess cognizant of how important it is. You can, can you imagine the stress of all of there? I think they're doing the numbers of sixty uh, thousand people that have died. That's sixty thousand families, you all. That's sixty thousand families. Whatever the relationship, whatever the kinship, and we are focusing on praying for families uh, this year as w one of our national day of prayers on May seventh. And family is the first one of the issues that they will look at. That's where it starts. So get with your family. If you've got an advanced directive that is written, a living will, pull it out and make sure that somebody knows where it is. And if you haven't, write down, journal you a statement. If something happens to me, and I, this is what I would like to happen. Because we are in a crisis, but we are also including uh, ourselves with more stress when we don't help each other. That's all I gotta say, I'm Y. Woods Harris. The channel is Wise Wise Grief Community Advocacy. Be an advocate today in your community, starting with your family. I'm out of here.